Minix returns for another round with a new Z series fanless mini, which is good news since the original won best budget fanless mini PC in my yearly awards. The Z150 0DB is a large chunk of metal acting as the heatsink for the CPU. It also looks a hell of a lot nicer than nearly all fanless mini PCs on the market, thanks to some well placed splashes of paint. The refreshed Z150 0DB features the refreshed Intel N150 which is slowly replacing the N100 as a dominant budget CPU. It's very similar with 4 cores and 4 threads, but there's been a slight bump up in clock speeds which helps single core and iGPU performance. Apart from the mini, there's a small power supply with regional plugs, HDMI cable, visor mount and screws, and the bunny ears, also less commonly known as wireless antennas. The Z150 0DB is currently available for US$237 US after the coupon for the 512GB SSD 16GB DDR4 combo, and that's currently lower than the Z100 model with the same configuration. All things being equal, the Z150 should be an easy pick over the Z100, but things are rarely so simple. Sadly, the ports are unchanged with this refresh, which means no USB-C power and display, a much requested feature. So what is included? Well, there's a reset button on the front. Inside is an Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201 for wireless and Bluetooth. The left side has a micro SD card slot. The USB-C is a 10 gigabit data port only. There's also dual USB 3 10 gigabit, an audio jack, and the power button. The right side has a barrel jack connector which supports 12 to 19 volts. Finally, we have dual USB 2, Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, and dual HDMI for up to 4K 60Hz. A total of two displays on this one. Opening this mini is easy. Four screws, lift the bottom plate, and you're in. That's what she said! <laughs> At the top we have the M.2 wireless card, then the M.2 Gen 3 NVMe slot, which is X4 speed and rare for these budget Intel CPUs due to a lack of PCIe lanes. There's only one DDR4 RAM slot since these CPUs only support single channel memory. Minix has thrown in a DDR4-3200 sodium stick. Turning it on boots you into Windows 11 Pro. The malware and rootkit scan return no results. That's what we like to see. The latest Ubuntu works without any issues. Also what we like to see. Alright, let's see how well the Minix Z150 holds up against a whole heap of other budget minis. In single core Cinebench, it's the best performing fanless mini yet. Slightly beating out the next two below it. And I mean very slightly. We're almost cracking a whole 2%. Multicore unfortunately isn't as good. The Z150 0DB is power limited with no option in the BIOS to increase it. As such, it's only slightly better than the Neosme N100 fanless mini PC. My review unit of the Z100 did allow tweaking the power limit manually, and you can see it hit almost 3000, which is what the N100 and N150 should be getting in Cinebench. On the brighter side, the CPU doesn't get as toasty, but we'll go over that later. The Geekbench 6 single core result is good, with the Z150 taking the bronze medal. In Geekbench multi-core it does better, but still falls behind a bunch of N100 and N150 minis. The final multi-core CPU test looks at how long it takes the mini to encode an H.264 video file. As it is, the Z150 is behind the Z100, and with the power limits tweaked, it's really far behind. Something new now added to the budget mini benchmarks is H.264 hardware video encoding for the same file. Here's the first result, showing the time being cut down by almost 200 seconds. There's nothing surprising on the IGP side. Intel's N150 has a nice improvement over the N100, but DDR4 is holding this mini back from the top results in DX11 and both the DX12 benchmarks. Still, a nice GPU increase. A CPU with a Cinebench multicore score of 2400 isn't going to do well in Valorant, and it's completely bottlenecked with a choppy frame rate. So this test is just to make sure Secure Boot is working properly. Even in League of Legends, which is an easy game to run, the CPU is being pushed hard. The plan is to try one new game with each budget mini PC, so this time, it's Onimusha Warlords Remastered. The N150 plays it just fine. The game can be emulated at 720p using a PS2 emulator, 
this native port is much better, which leads nicely into PS2 emulation. Most games run fine at 720p, and the same with GameCube and Wii emulation. The multimedia side is one of the stronger areas of Intel's budget line of CPUs. Playback of 4K60 media files using H.264 or AV1 codecs is possible, as is video editing at 1080p if you're really on a budget. This 1080p Adobe Premiere project is managing pretty well even with the CPU maxed out. Export times are going to be long though. The final test is audio latency with Cinebench running in the background. There aren't any issues here with the DPC latency kept low. This Z150 0DB came with a 256GB NVMe SSD. While it might have full Gen 3 bandwidth available and able to reach those speeds in the sequentials, the random read and write speed is much less impressive. It performs closer to a good SATA drive. There's a chunky heatsink on the SSD, which keeps the drive from thermal throttling, but temperature wise, it's still on the higher side. You'd expect Bluetooth range to be pretty good with bunny ears, and you'd be right. The Z150 took third spot. Wireless range was also very good, with no issues at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. An idle power draw of 9 watts is pretty common and the maximum of 27 watts for the multi-core performance on offer is about right. The CPU temp matched the default power level result of the Z100 fanless version. Pretty good for a mini with no active cooling, although the multi-core performance is lower and the case still gets pretty hot. At the absolute hottest, the mini was uncomfortable to touch longer than a few seconds. Obviously with no fan, fan noise is non-existent, but a 0 dB result doesn't look right in the chart so I've got the ambient noise level listed instead. These are the fanless minis, if you're curious. The size of the Z150 is unchanged, it's above average volume, and exactly the same as the previous Z series fanless minis we looked at. Mash the delete key on startup to enter the BIOS. In advanced CPU configuration, you can only turn off turbo mode, and power settings has the options for power loss, wake on LAN, and so on. Chipset has a few more options. Nothing most will worry about, and that's all that's available. Okay, we've gone over the refresh. Here are my pros and cons. Well, it's fanless, and it's silent. Once you experience it, it's hard to go back. Bunny ears means no wireless problems. The slab of metal is big enough to keep the mini from thermal throttling. Intel's N150 provides a small increase in single core and better graphics performance. But as nice as the mini is, it's not perfect. Multi-core performance is below average. There's no USB-C power delivery or display, second storage slot, or DDR5 memory. Are you interested in silent computing? Or have you taken the plunge already? Let me know your thoughts. While it's disappointing there haven't been any improvements over its predecessor, the Z150 0DB is still a top tier fanless mini PC you should consider, especially if the price is close to the N100 model. But if you like something much more powerful for a little extra and don't mind a little fan noise, check out my review of the Minix NGC NR660, which provides some decent bang for buck right here. Cheers!